My name is Michael Lang from Waukesha, Wisconsin. This is a 1948 UL Flathead. Uh, I've owned it now for 50 years. Uh, built it when I was 15 years old uh, in high school. The day after I graduated high school, I rode it to California and back. And uh, for a 17 year old, it was quite an adventure. It's been in boxes since 1978. Uh, because in 1978 we, we rear-ended a car and bent the front end a little bit. It wasn't been bad, but for whatever reason, I took it apart and put it away in boxes for the next 43 plus years. And Scott and Warren, that uh, are the founders of Mama Tribe, they kept on telling me for, for probably the last good eight to nine years, they kept on saying, dude, you got to get this bike back together. You know, you don't realize that you have. When COVID hit last year, and we were all in lockdown, I decided it was a good time to take it out of Slumberland and, and, and get it back together for the show. So this is the first show it's actually been to. We thought it would be fitting for it to be debuted at Mama Tried Show. I was 15 years old when I built it. Uh, when I actually acquired the bike, I could not, the, the guy couldn't sell it to me. He actually sold it to my mom because I was underage. But I still have all the paperwork, all the documentation. It was on a, like a payment plan. I'd give them $12 a week. It cost me $650 when I first got it. It was a, it was a stock 48 UL old junky motorcycle and uh, took it to school and, and started hacking on it. First time, the very first version, uh, the frame and tank were not molded at all. And it was painted candy blue. And it only was that way for that summer. And you know, some of the parts I actually spray painted uh, silver because I couldn't afford chrome, even though chrome was dirt cheap back then. Uh, the second year I built it, uh, over that winter, it was painted purple and blue with a king and queen seat. And I put this current uh, axe uh, chopper gas tank on it and did more molding and rode that. That was the version I rode it to California and back. That only was that way for that summer as well and did the windshield and actually went from an 18 over Springer front end to a 24 over Springer front end and changed the seat out to what's on it now. I left the rake alone. Uh, when I first got it out this spring and took it for a ride for the first time in probably 43, 44 years, it was like, what a piece of crap, you know? <laughs> Well, uh, the chrome, uh, the front fork was actually the worst. I had to straighten the front end, and the chrome was actually starting to pit and rust pretty bad because I just had it hanging from the, the ceiling rafters in the garage, an unheated garage. So I thought I was going to have to get it replated. And after I straightened it, I just started taking SOS to it in a sink, and I was, I was shocked at how nice it it came back. I just cleaned things. The, the frame had a lot of embedded dirt and dust and stains from, I don't know where the stains came from, but it wasn't coming off easy. It took a, a lot of rubbing and it's still not perfect, but I don't want it to be perfect either. You know, it has character now and uh, it shows well though. I mean, so many things have happened on it. I mean, on our wedding day, we we have a picture of us. My wife's in her wedding dress and I'm in my suit. As soon as we got done with that, we switched and put our jeans and t-shirts on and jumped on it and went for a ride. It's different. I can't imagine riding it to California and back again. You know, as a 17 year old, you don't have any worries. You don't have any cares. And, uh, you know, you just went for it. It was a party. That's all it was, it was a party all the way there and back. So. My name is Dan Ronsvold. They call me Cabana Dan. Today I have my 1926 Harley P Shooter here. It's an original factory, or not original factory racer, but a factory racer bike. I restored. There's a few repop parts of tanks. You can't find the tanks on the early bikes. They're leaded, so they usually fall apart. Probably about five years collecting parts. So it's a mishmash of different bikes from different racers. So there's a ton of parts in Australia and New Zealand. I had to get a lot of parts from there because there isn't a lot here. 
the single cylinders were more for the overseas market, even the not overhead racing type stuff. The flat, they made a flathead motor too. Getting the jack shaft, which is between the motor and the actual rear wheel, it transfers transfers from this side of the motor to this side of the rear wheel, getting that all done. It took about two years to get all that lined up for parts. Uh, it was the first year of the single, from single Harleys, other than the early teen stuff, the singles, but yeah. I'm thinking they're talking like 30 horsepower. They're 21 cubic inch, or just tiny motors. Yes, it was for a flat track, and it's actually just a direct drive. There's no push start, no transmission. One gear and go, yeah. Give her full throttle and give her help. There's a lot of reference manuals you can find for the paint net. Actually, this is a 30s paint job. I just love the looks of the 30s. So it could have been, even with the racers, they could have had them repainted down the road to have that paint. I've seen them the same arrow with the same paint job scheme. And if you look at Staff Messenger, that was the company that made the seats at the time for the racers. It's actually telescopic, flying Merkel front end, what they called it, a Merkel type front end. It actually has a suspension, so it's got a little bit of give, not much. Not much, it's just having the right parts and making it right. No, I haven't ridden it yet. I'm almost afraid to. I ran the mo I've run the motor in that, but I haven't ridden the bike, yeah. and it's almost too pretty to ride. So.